some kind of monster. Wait, that's not a monster. That's a man wearing shoulder pads. There's only one supervillain whose fashion sense is quite that dated. Free! Balthazar Brat. I want every agent on the scene immediately. Agents Brucey are closing fast. Yes. Wait, what? What did you call us? Brucey. You know, Gru and Lucy mushed together. Brucey. Oh, I like it, but not a lot. I don't like it. Hello and welcome to What the Flick. Um, it's summertime and that means you get more minions in some form or another, whether you want them or not. There's a whole minion like chicken nugget menu at what, McDonald's? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> minion shaped chicken nuggets like they were always intended to be. Anyway, I'm Christy, that's Lonzo. There is a third Despicable Me movie apparently and it's really different from all the other ones. Please tell us about it. Uh, it's not really that different, <laughs> she, she's kidding. Uh, no, actually there's not enough minions going on frankly, which is a problem for me. Uh, but. But uh, this time around, we have Gru now uh, fighting with the good guys and trying to chase down a, an 80s uh, child star uh, turned international supervillain named uh, Brendan? Bar Bartholomew Bartha Brat. Something, something Brat. Some, he's, not Benjamin. He's No, no, he's nice. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, this guy is voiced by uh, Trey Parker and uh, the chasing him down and getting a diamond back involves uh, an accidental encounter with uh, Gru's twin brother that he never knew he had, named Drew, who is also voiced by Steve Carell, but he has hair. Take a look. <laughs> Hello, Gru. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, what about that? What? Oh, girls! Dance fight! <laughs> So it's just more of same. And I, I agree though that there is not enough minions in this because not unlike the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Right? <laughs> Where they divide up all the characters yes. that you like who have such nice chemistry with each other. The minions and Gru are barely together in this at all. And that lack of energy kind of permeates the whole thing. Like the Definitely. moments where the minions are, are being the minions, and because minions gonna minion. Oh, yeah. Um, those are really fun. And there's a couple of different production numbers in particular that are zippy and zany and they're what, they're what you want the minions to be. Yeah. But this just feels really scattershot and it feels like a bunch of different little subplots that never quite gel. And it's it's the same if you like these movies, it's kind of the same of it. But uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm never a fan. So it's no. like, it's hard for me to sort of judge that this one's maybe not up to the part of the standards of one and two. But it seems to me there's a lot of things that they attempt to throw out there that don't really go anywhere. Like for example, the oldest of the three little girls. Uh, Margo. Margo, a little a little boy kisses her and her, and is like smitten with her, and then shows up the next day, you know, claiming that, that, that they're engaged, and then he is never heard from again. Right, and there's supposedly <laughs> a curse on the family because they're in some like old country, yeah, like Fredonia, Eastern European, no, something. No or Groucho other. Marx, yeah, yeah. unfortunately. And so, um, so but that, that just dropped. Anymore, right? the, I forgot about that. Actually. Yeah, yes. and then is Edith, the middle Edith girl, the middle one, yeah. nothing to do. Yeah. Agnes has this dumb subplot about like finding a real unicorn. And that, it's like, it felt like they didn't have time to deal with this ever growing cast of characters. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to deal with Kristen Wiig's character worrying about if she's a good mom or not. And we, you know, and there's, uh, you know, the whole thing with the brother and how the brother wants to be a villain, but Gru is trying not to be a villain. And eh, um, I did like uh, Trey Parker a lot. Yes. I liked that character. I liked the sort of, uh, they nail that. There's that 80s shade of purple that has never existed <laughs> before or since that he dresses in. Uh, you know, I love the fact that he has a, both a mullet and a bald spot. Yeah, you know? no, the details on him, like they had fun with him, the shoulder pads yeah. and um, all his little devices. Um, the soundtrack of his 80s songs is maybe a little obvious. A little on they the nose. They did not go deep cuts. I was, I was talking to Tim Gerson about this last night at Spider Man, which we're also going to talk about. How, like, this is the opposite of the Baby Driver soundtrack, right? <laughs> right? This is like every obvious 80s song. Yes. That you know, and they're not trying to you know, challenge you. It's like, aha, take now, on me. Now that's what I call music. Yes, it is, it yeah. is that. It is that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the main story, which, and even the main story isn't all that great. Gru versus Gru, Gru versus Drew. Yeah. Um, everything else feels really, really wedged in and underdeveloped. Yeah. The whole thing with with Kristen Wiig, for example, which you mentioned, is like, it's such a waste of how great Kristen Wiig can be, and it's so underdeveloped. Like, they have vague 
shadings of, oh yeah, we gotta go back to her. Remember her? She's still <laughs> here, so we gotta go back and get, do her her motherly subplot. Right. And the yeah, just the pacing and the energy of it is kind of all over the place. And then once you finally remember that there are minions, like then the movie comes to life again. Yes. Having said that, I was the one who said that a little bit of minions go a long way. It goes a long way when they had an entire minion oh, movie. See, I now that you have given me a whole minion yes. movie, I only oh, want all minions. minion movies. I don't care about Gru or the kids or the whatever. You know, I, I find these movies somehow simultaneously bland and frantic. Like <laughs> the, the you frantic. know. They're Atlantic. Yeah, the, the <laughs> characters are not interesting to me. I don't, you know, in any way. But there's just so much like noisy running around, eh, and I'm not even talking about the minions. I mean, the of the human beings are like running around and yeah. making noises and just being irritating. And I, I don't know. The the appeal of these films has escaped me and continues to do so. Yeah, I would say it is diminishing returns. I mean, from from the first one, there was sort of a, a cool off kilter nature to the animation, to mm -hmm. the shape of things, to the style of things, to the way. Things would get exaggerated in one direction or another, and um, that was cool in the beginning, and it is just diminishing returns with it at this point. Having said that, these movies make a shit ton of money. They and do. All things Minion make a shit ton of money, and my seven-year-old who loves Minions and thinks he is a Minion um, <laughs> loved it and was giggling the whole time. Having said that, the stuff he goes back to is the stuff with the Minions. So my son now knows about the Pirates of Penzance. Ah, Thanks there we go. this movie, there is a, there's a production number. <laughs> and, um, and so he wanted to go back and watch that clip right. of that song. And um, yeah, so if you have little kids, they will love it. If you are an adult who is forced to go along with your kids, it's tolerable yeah. if you want 80s I, nostalgia. Because we are their target audience. For that stuff, that yeah, way. no, but it's square in the center. Okay, I'm saying four. Uh, what did I? You said six. I said six. You yeah, I, because I really I liked the moments of the minions and the villain. I wanted more of them, and I would have liked the movie more had I gotten it. But I those entertained me enough that I kind of treaded water through the rest of it. So it's like mm -hmm, six. It is thoroughly harmless. So yeah. our number is a five, and it is at sixty percent on the tomato meter. Not that it matters, because it doesn't. Bye.